Hi, everyone. Welcome to the December 11th edition of Horses to Watch. On the show this week, I'm going to take a look back at three replays from last week at Aqueduct. One on the dirt, two on the turf. One caveat to the turf replays is that the turf season has now ended in New York. This last weekend was the last weekend that they scheduled turf racing. Uh, we're just on the main track from here on out for the next several months. But the horses that I'm highlighting, you might see them run back maybe down at Gulfstream or another venue where there is turf racing uh, during the winter. So just keep an eye out for them in the entries at some other circuits. Let's Let's begin, though, with one of those dirt races. The uh, December 5th card at uh, Aqueduct last Thursday. I want to take a look at the last race. It's one of a couple maiden races on that card. This one for the New York Bridge two-year-olds. We can break in from the gate, and I want to focus on the number five horse, More Grateful. This is a first-time starter for Brad Cox. And you see he breaks about a length behind the field. Uh, just not an ideal start for a horse that's making his career debut because now he's got to take a lot of dirt in his face. You do want to note that the kickback situation that I had talked about about a month ago at Aqueduct kind of reared its head again this week where it seemed like it was difficult for horses to make big runs from off the pace while coming through between horses or coming through on the inside. They really had to do it out in the center of the racetrack. And you see more grateful here in those yellow silks towards the back of the pack. He's having to split horses here come through in between. Now he's getting to the outside where you want to be, but the pace of this race was not that fast. So I think this horse deserves a lot of credit for making this mid-race move. And typically when a two-year-old first-time starter makes this kind of move, a premature one at that around the far turn, they flatten out in the stretch, but that's not the case with more grateful. He continues to move at the leader coming to the quarter pole and actually is going to stick his head in front at one point coming to the, to the eighth pole before the eventual winner, the number seven convict battles back inside. Now, Convict, who wins this race, he is game to win and, and fend off more grateful. But you do want to know, he got a pretty uh, relaxing second quarter there because they won the second quarter in about 24 seconds after a quicker first quarter. And I think that gave him enough energy to finish off this race and hold off more grateful, who, as you saw, had to do a lot more work to even get into contention by the time they got to the quarter pole. This was a fast race. They both are in high uh, time form US speed figures and high buyer numbers. So I think you want to watch out for both of these horses in the future. But in my opinion, more grateful is the one that definitely ran the better race. Uh, he's not going to be any kind of huge price next time, but these, I think, are some New York grades that you want to follow. Let's move on to one of those turf races from Saturday at Aqueduct. This was the Cigar Mile card, and I want to check out one of the early stakes races on that card. Uh, this was the Auden Day Stakes, which is race four, and we can break them from the gate because I want to focus on the number three horse, Rose Flower. Kind of like in the previous replay, she does not break that well. She breaks towards the back of the pack. That's not so bad because she is a horse who's a confirmed closing type. And the eventual winner of this race, the number eight, Saratoga Treasure, she's also closing from far back in the pack. So this was not a race that favored the front runners. However, you do want to note the difference in trips between Rose Flower, the number three, and the eventual winner, the number eight, Saratoga Treasure, because this was a race that had a significant outside flow to it. Saratoga Treasure, she does run well to win this race. She's going to loop the field, coming around the far turn, and draw off to win by about three and a half lengths. But she's doing so into the slowest part of the race. You see the first quarter go up in 23 and one seconds. The second quarter is going to go up in 24 and change, the half mile in 47 and change. And you see Rose Flower, the number three, towards the back of the pack. Her ride of draw Rosario is trying to save as much ground as possible, keeping her inside, but she's losing momentum here, whereas the number eight Saratoga Treasure was just able to loop the entire field. Now she's in front and in the clear, whereas Rose Flower, you can see, is totally stymied in traffic. Her rider can't motivate her at all. He's just trying to pick a, a clear path for her to run through. Can't find one until very late in the stretch. Now she's still last year coming past the eighth pole. She's actually going to just miss finishing second in this race by about a head. And that speaks to the fact that she had a lot of horse left uh, at the end of this race and just never got to show what she could do in the stretch because she was held up in traffic for the entire time. Would she have won this race? That's not totally clear to me because the winner was dominant, but I do think it would have been a lot closer if she had had a clear run. The problem with Rose Flower is she can ship down to Gulfstream for Christophe Clement because she's an open company runner. She's got stake conditions and allowance conditions available to her, but she's not really a five furlong type of horse. And they run those five furlong turf sprints at Gulfstream. Maybe they'd stretch her out to a mile at Gulfstream or the seven and a half furlong distance down there. I don't know, but uh, the seven furlongs or six furlongs that they run in New York really seems to be ideal for her. So she's one to watch out for uh, wherever she shows up, but she might want one of those elongated sprint races that we get in New York. Last race to talk about is one from Sunday, one of the final turf races that ran in New York this season. It was the third race on that Sunday card at Aqueduct, a race for uh, Maidens going the two turns on the turf course. And let's pick it up from the start. And we're going to focus on two horses here, the number six, Miaminoi, and the number eight, Distorted Sky. Now, the number six, Miaminoi, 
is the eventual winner of this race. And don't often highlight winners, but I think this horse is one that ran particularly well in victory, so he's one to follow. The number eight, Distorted Sky, he was a first-time starter in this race who will eventually finish fourth, but I think he's a horse that you might want to follow because he ran deceptively well here. This was not a race that featured a ton of pace. It's hard to know what to make of the fractions because these late-season turf courses, uh, they're hard to rate. I think this turf course was rated yielding. Uh, it was playing faster than that sometimes, a little slower other times. The fractions do seem honest, but uh, this is not a race that really favored closers. If you uh, whip the leader right now, just in time for wine, is actually going to hold on for second in this race. So uh, I don't think closers had any kind of advantage here. I want to watch on the backstretch, though, the move that the number six, Miaminoi, makes, because this is a really nifty uh, move between horses that Eric Conzel, who's on him, allows him to... Uh, to, to put forth here because he's in kind of a difficult spot in between horses with some long shots ahead of him. And in those pink silks here, he's getting a little bit rank. He's trying to tug his rider up into the pace. And usually most riders would try to restrain horses and get them to relax in this situation. But Eric Consell just lets him go. He lets him run up between horses all the way up into second place. And typically that might be considered a premature move, but uh, Miaminoi, he had the horse to do it and the energy to finish off this race even after making that premature move. Uh, so uh, I think this is a horse to follow, able to make multiple moves within a race. Now, towards the back of the pack, you'll see the number eight, Distorted Sky. He's got that white blaze, the blue silk, swinging off the rail now. He's just a little bit green on his wrong lead here. Takes him a little bit, a little while to change leads in the stretch. This horse has a big stride on him. I like the way he finishes off this race. He's a son of distorted humor with a nice European pedigree on the dam side, making his first start for Bill Mott and Godolphin. I believe he's a homebred. He's really running on to the end of this race in a spot where not a whole lot of horses were doing a lot of running or passing horses in the stretch. He gallops out very strongly, even past the winner of this race. So I think both of these horses are ones to follow in the future. Miami and I will see if Danny Gargan rests him up or brings him down to Florida, but uh, I think he's one that was very impressive in victory. The speed figure for this race was very respectable. Distorted Sky, I would imagine he'll go to Gulfstream because he's got maiden conditions available to him. They have a ton of maiden uh, races down there on the turf, going longer distances as well, and he feels like one that might want a distance like a mile and an eighth, which they do run down there. So I'd follow both of these horses if they show up at Gulfstream next time. Those are all the horses to watch for this week, and I'll be back again next week to analyze three more replays.